Hello and welcome to Dielectric Videos. Today's episode is going to be kind of a random spotlight on one of my favorite pieces of vintage history, and that is the rayon braided cloth cord. Now these things are kind of an interesting relic of history in that they, uh, they kind of came and went between the 1920s and the 19, uh, 1940s, and they, uh, they really didn't, la they didn't stick around for very long because they're not particularly robust. I'll get to that in a little bit, but uh, because of that lack of robustness, it actually has made them quite rare to find in the wild still. It's actually relatively rare to actually see one of these on a working appliance, and even, well, somewhat less rare to see one on a broken or old uh, kind of def uh, defunct piece of equipment. But uh, where, uh, where you can find older equipment, in almost all cases, you'll have found that if there was an original uh, rayon braided cord installed on it, it will have been replaced at some point with either a rubber or plastic cord more recently. So let's get to why these are so rare specifically. As I mentioned, they, uh, they really are not very robust. I, in a previous video discussing the Electropup, referred to this as a horsehair insulated cord. That's not actually true. This is uh, a rayon braid, which was the first commercially produced synthetic fiber. And as is often the case with early adoption technologies, it really did not stand the test of time. Uh, better quality materials came around later and ultimately replaced it. Now, the conductors inside actually boast a somewhat better insulation material. This is a cotton-covered conductor with, uh, in, I believe in this case, it has a thin layer of rubber underneath as well, but in many cases you'll see just a cotton braid, and those actually do tend to last quite long. But the sheathing, the rayon sheathing on them, uh, in almost all cases, including this one, pretty much just flakes off. I mean, you can see it's already just falling to bits on the table. And really, that's why you see these having been replaced so often. So that's actually really the reason I find these to be so incredibly cool when I can uh, come across them. You hardly see any of them working, and when you come across one that actually is serviceable, or at least somewhat serviceable like this one is, it's kind of a cool find, and you can uh, integrate it into some projects if you want to. Now, because of the lack of robustness of the cable, it really is not suited to uh, applications where frequent flexing or even moving the cable frequently is going to be a factor. But for such uh, situations where it's going to be set up in one place for a long time, it can be quite, uh, quite usable if you're interested in using really vintage, authentic time period equipment like this. So what do I actually use this for? Well, this is probably, uh, I use this primarily as my main ground lifting cable for my isolated workbench. So if, I, uh, if you watch my electronic safety basics video that I made earlier, I talk about how my workbench I run completely isolated. So I don't run any ground and I don't have any grounded surfaces that I could accidentally touch and get shocked if I was also working with live equipment. Uh, it's, you can either take the, the strategy of grounding everything, which is what's done traditionally in industry, or for specialty equipment and specialty projects, you can do what I do and, and float everything. Sort of uh, two sides of the same coin, mainly the, the point being to make sure that the person working can never come in contact with hot and grounded surfaces at the same time. But uh, I have this set up with, uh, I actually have an original uh, old Bakelite plug uh, cord cap on it. I've actually taken it off and uh, reinforced each conductor with some shrink, uh, shrink heat shrink tube just to be sure they don't short out uh, internally against each other. And on the other side, I've attached a NEMA 5-20R receptacle. So this is going from ungrounded 15 amp to grounded 20 amp, which is a little bit naughty and uh, Considering this is an 18 gauge cord, it's maybe pushing it a little bit hard, but we'll get to one of the other properties of these uh, cloth sheath cords that I actually find to be quite useful in a second that's related to that. So I use it as a ground lift, I use it as a general purpose extension cord, uh, and it really, provided you don't flex it around all the time, it actually will do its job quite nicely. So what are some of the benefits to this? Because obviously looking at this, you can you probably would say, this thing is, is pretty much useless, it belongs in the landfill, it's going to fall apart and, and short out and catch fire and all kinds of horrible things. 
But uh, there is one redeeming factor that makes these chords actually quite, uh, quite uh, desirable for certain applications, and that is they can withstand a quite high temperature compared to PVC insulated or uh, other plastic insulated cables. These things can get up to the pretty much up to the smoke point of the uh, of the cotton fiber before they finally start to break down, and that means you can actually get the you can run a whole lot of current for the size conductor on these. Uh, I've actually measured that at a 20 amp load, this is 18 gauge conductor. At a 20 amp load, this will get up to around uh, 160 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit but uh, no signs of degradation of the insulation whatsoever. And uh, that's owing to the fact that it's a cellulose fiber insulation rather than a, uh, a plastic that it will melt. Now the only downside of that is if you do actually get it hot enough to reach its smoke point, uh, it does tend to be more flammable. So whereas the other uh, PVC insulated cord will tend to fail short as the wires melt and the conductors touch, this will tend to fail uh, as an actual fire where it will continue operating but will burn. So best not to let it really get overloaded too much, but because of that high temperature resistance, you can actually uh, get run a whole lot of current through these. So basically, this is, uh, this is one of the things I look for when I'm out in the, looking at vintage electronics. I enjoy collecting vintage gear and uh, having the original cord on it and having it be in reasonable condition, especially if it's a rayon braided cord, will always catch my eye if I come across something like that in the wild. It's so few of these are still in existence and still serviceable that when you do come across one, uh, it's quite a satisfying find for the vintage electronics enthusiasts such as myself. So this was a super short video. just going over some random topic, which was rayon insulated cords. So if you'd like to see more short little videos like this, let me know in the comments. And uh, if you happen to have any cords like this, or you haven't know of any running in the wild, feel free to send links or photos, because I, uh, I would be glad to feature some photos about that or videos about that on my channel. So thanks for watching Dielectric Videos. I will see you next time.